Um, is the UN committed now to starting the withdrawal at the end of the year as the foreign minister and the president have demanded no matter what happens? And how long do you envision a withdrawal will take? Because we've all seen what's happened with Mali and the peacekeeping force there. This is the journey to One Africa. You said this morning that a few days ago the Congolese government adopted a new revised plan for the withdrawal of MONUSCO and that you're going to work with them to implement this plan. So can you tell us a little bit more about what's in this plan in terms of calendar? We guess that it starts, the withdrawal will start in, in December this year, but uh, in, I mean, how long would that take with this new plan to withdraw MINUSCO and which task are they going to transfer to the, um, to the, the, the Congolese forces uh, at each step of the way? Thank you. Well, thank you very much uh, for having me. And uh, just to clarify, uh, what has been endorsed uh, is at the technical level. It's between the Ministry of Planning and also the DSRG RC, Resident Coordinator and Humanitarian Coordinator. Uh, you've heard the minister talking about the structure. Uh, so above that structure, there is a prime minister and myself who still have to meet and to discuss the content of what has been proposed by the technical level, which is basically what are the conditions, uh, when I say conditions, what are the benchmark that needs to be implemented for a withdrawal and in a progressive and responsible manner for uh, MONUSCO. And in doing so, uh, we have now a number of benchmarks that from the previous uh, joint transition plan that we had, which had 18 benchmarks, we are now reduced to four, which correspond to the minimum which has to be in place for the mission to, to withdraw. So we are talking still about protection of civilians. We are still talking about the implementation of the uh, disarmament, demobilization, community re reintegration and stabilization. And we are talking about the security sector reform with all the cross-cutting issues with uh, 1325, 2250, as well as the human rights. Uh, so this is where we are. Now, for the next steps, the Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, has clearly spelled out today, and I heard the same yesterday when we had the meeting, that they want the action plan. So exactly what you are asking me, step by step, how this is going to be implemented on the ground in the three provinces, so then we have something that we can offer not only to the political level for endorsement, but also to the Security Council and for that matter, to the media. So then the questions about how exactly the implementation is going to go is going to be responded by that particular action plan. And for those who have seen the letter which has been sent by the Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, you can go on the page six, which is the last page, which clearly spelled out four elements that needs to be worked on. And this is what we intend to do with our counterpart. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Kaito. Edith Lettera from the Associated Press. Um, is the UN committed now to starting the withdrawal at the end of the year as the foreign minister and the president have demanded no matter what happens? And how long do you envision a withdrawal will take? Because we've all seen what's happened with Mali and the peacekeeping force there. And on elections, uh, the foreign minister uh, 
said they were definitely going to be transparent and uh, everybody who was eligible could participate. Are you concerned about the um, inclusion of all parties and the transparency? Thank you. Thank you. So the first point is uh, how long it's going to take. Uh, it's wise for me not to reply to that particular question because it will all depend on the action plan that we have to discuss. We are in a partnership here, so we have to discuss with the partner what exactly they have in mind, and from the knowledge and the lessons we've learned from some other places, we will feature this into the dialogue, so then at the end of October, uh, at the latest, we will have this information available for each and every one. Because if I advance anything here, it's not going to be the result of a consensus and the, and the dialogue. And I believe that in a partnership, it is very important that we all arrive to the same and derive the same conclusion with the uh, analysis and the same assessment that we have. So that's one, one, uh, uh, one point on your first question. On the second, which, is, uh, which has to do with the election, I've been very clear in my, uh, in my remarks, which is that we believe, we believe that the uh, quality of the elections is extremely important for further democratization and further stability for DRC. And in that context, all our advocacy and our good officers role alongside other partners and the diplomatic community in uh, DRC is to insist on the parameters of further making sure that it is inclusive. And in some of the elements of inclusivity, it has to do with the people who have not been able to be registered in Masisi, in Ruchuru, but also in Maidombe, Kwamut. So we will try as much as possible to continue, but we know that at some point there will be a limit. We are now less than three months to the 20th December of this year, so there will be some imperatives to look into. And for us, in terms of inclusivity, the women participation is absolutely key. Um, starting the withdrawal at oh. the end of the year. So again, uh, this has to be uh, something which needs to be clarified with uh, the government of DRC because there are various interpretations of what means exactly December 23. Some people are interpreting it as we start the disengagement end of uh, 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 December 23. Some are thinking, okay, we start in January uh, 24. But from that, it, it needs, again, in a partnership spirit, it needs to be discussed with uh, the uh, Congolese authorities. Celia Lavarain, Africa Confidential. What I would like to know is, the mission has been there for 20 years. I would like to know what did the UN achieve, and did you... Um, did you do the job when it comes to Rwanda and Uganda still stealing the natural resources of the DRC? So you are asking me what is the evaluation as of today of the role of the United Nations in DRC. I would say first, uh, one has to remember that years, years, years ago, uh, this country was uh, full of foreign armed groups all over DRC. This is no longer the case, and thanks to my predecessor and the work which has been done before. You will recall that there were elections in 2006, in 2011, and above, and the United Nations has contributed to those uh, electoral processes. And uh, we also have a dialogue, the Sun City uh, dialogue, and all of this, United Nations has been part and facilitating along as a partners to those uh, uh, dialogue and initiatives that uh, kept the unity uh, up to now of uh, uh, DRC. So I think it's important to, uh, to look at uh, the various aspects of what the United Nations is contributing to in uh, DRC. Now on the natural resources, we know that this is one of the root causes of uh, the drivers of the conflict. And we have various aspects of uh, not just the MONUSCO, but also with the Office of the Special Envoy of the Great Lakes, with other 
uh, United Nations uh, Agency for Land Program working on how we can improve the management of the natural resources in order for them to benefit the population of the RC. SRSG, Sherman Bryce B, South African Broadcasting. Help me understand, you've been asked to leave, Manusco has been told to leave, but SADC has now deployed a peacekeeping mission that's going in, uh, but SADC also makes up a large portion of Manusco in terms of the Force Intervention Brigade, so what's your understanding of how this is all going to work? I'm a bit confused. Well, I'm as confused as you. <laughs> So, which means that uh, we still have to unpack all how it's going to happen. What we know is that we are requesting to be part of the conversation, the design, in order to arrive at uh, better uh, information sharing, coordination, because we are in the same theater of operations. So those conversations, we intend to have them, and then maybe next time when we see each other, I will be able to be less confused about how all of this is going to be. Thank you. <laughs>